I'm a supply officer, so um, when I joined the Navy, I decided that I wanted to do something that was like solving a puzzle, and so I thought logistics was the right fit for me. My mom was in the Air Force, and my brother is also a, a naval officer, so he's a surface warfare officer in PAC fleet. This is uh, my second operational tour in the fleet, so uh, as you can imagine, going to 32 different show sites every year is really challenging logistically, so my team is in charge of making sure that we have all the aircraft parts that we need in each location to make sure that we can fly a safe flight demonstration. So that can be a challenge, but it's something that we're well equipped to handle and it's just a part of the fun. <laughs> I go uh, by my first name, Mara, but I also go by Suppo, which is supply officer for short. My family's always been military. Grandfather's father was all prior military, mostly Navy for the most part. And so I want to kind of follow that path and give back to the community. Originally Middletown, Maryland. Every show is, has its own pros and cons, of course. So Chicago so far has been probably one of my favorites. So you get to see a little bit of everything, lots of different food, the water, I love the water, so coming from Florida. But this is probably on the top of the list for sure. So we have, on a, my contract is three years with the team. We do about 32 show sites a year. Our show season ends in November. We'll start the transition with the team immediately following the end of the season, rolling into the winter. So from January to March is when we start our actual winter training out in El Centro. And that entire time, we're about a third of our team is brand new. And so everybody's kind of coming together and training up for the next season. Captain Samuel Petko. For the Blue Angels, I've been on the team for two years now, but uh, in total, I've been in the military for over eight years now. My brother was also a Marine. He did air traffic control, and then my father's been a pilot his whole life, just on the civilian side, though, in the commercial side. And I kind of mixed the two together and became a, a pilot in the Marine Corps. Our C-130 on this team, uh, we have a little bit, a few modifications than the ones in the fleet, but we go a little bit faster than they do. It's, we go about 300 uh, knots indicated, which is Basically, sim simply, it's uh, 300 miles per hour. For us, it looks like we can fly about eight hours these days and we can change our, our profile if we need to, but um, we can make it across the country in one flight. I think the cities like Chicago is where you want to be, especially because you're over water, but you have a, an awesome backdrop with, uh, with the city and the towers behind you. Behind the aircraft, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, yeah, so this is the pilot's view. Just on little cues, you know, to, to maintain the altitude. It's the actually kind of roomy in uh, here. And the roll rate. And a tube and fabric airplane to really speak to. Unlike a lot of the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They all do in different ways, but pretty in tune. Little snacks, <laughs> in flight <laughs> food service. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the best I get. <laughs> Where are you based out of? Uh, Warrington, Virginia. So how many stops do you have to make to get fuel to get to a place like here? If you're lucky, none. 
Really? Uh, we actually made it here non-stop. If you get enough of a tailwind, get up high where the speed's a little better, yeah, we can we can make it non-stop. Usually one stop. You get tired of sitting in the airplane after four hours or so. It get cramped up a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. How do you not get sick? Because when I watch from the ground and I'm getting sick just watching you. Practice, practice, practice. That's why, that's how we don't get sick. If I haven't flown for a few weeks uh, and then I go practice and I fly hard, I, I get a little bit green. Um, so um, you just have to build a tolerance. It's like running a marathon. You can't just do it overnight. You gotta run a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then build up to it. Same thing with this airplane. It's all about keeping proficiency and uh, being air show ready. Do you get disoriented ever after all those rolls to try oh, and like? Absolutely, uh, but that's what that's why we practice so much. Um, we know our limits and we know uh, if we do have a little bit of that feeling, then we're not ready to fly in front of people. So that's why we fly so much and keep up a, a level of proficiency and tolerance so that we're always safe. Is there, like, let's say you did get disoriented, can you, is there a way to look at the gauges and tell where you need to be by the gauges alone? Um, I'm going to say not really. Not on this plane? Not on this plane. This is a day VFR, no weather. I need to see outside. and, and So it's all you? It's, it's all you. Of course, you have airspeed and you have altitude. Um, and we're looking inside for that all the time, but we're looking outside for references. Uh, a good example is when I'm flying the show downtown Chicago in front of, you know, just north of the Navy Pier, um, I'm always keeping a, an eye on the hook that's right at show center and the shoreline. Um, and I'm always keeping everything in reference to a couple references on the ground. Um, and I'm keeping track of those all the time. So that's why we need clear skies, uh, discernible horizon, no haze or fog, um, so our, uh, we're using our Mark I eyeballs. <laughs> gotcha. And uh, so like cities like Chicago where you have, you're flying over water, do you prefer to fly inland or over water? You know, um, they're, both, they're both fun. Um, sometimes water can be a little bit more challenging, uh, especially if there's not a lot of uh, waves or wind. If the water is smooth as glass, like some some places where you just, it's never smooth here in Lake Michigan. Um, <laughs> uh, but the depth perception when you're looking at the water is a little tough. Um, but the one thing I do love about shows like, if we were to have the show here at Gary Airport and fly right here, I can land and talk to the people right away. Um, at over uh, beach shows, um, it takes a little bit. We can still get down to show center. Uh, but um, so there's your pros and cons as far as uh, more opportunity to uh, meet and greet with the people, which is, the, to me, is the best part of air shows. Yeah, I don't know how many, do you know how many people come to this show? A million? Yeah, it's gotta be yeah. at least a million. So there'll be a million people rooting for you guys and cheering? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gonna be great. There's gonna be people all over from the skyscrapers down to the, to uh, the toes, of, you know, sand in the toes on the beach um, watching the show. And in the water, you know, on, on boats, uh, so they're, a little bit of everywhere for this air show. Well, thank you very much and have some fun out there. All right, thanks.
10 to 11,000 pounds of gas. At this point, he's got about 
Not the flag. Not the flag one. <laughs> the trail of smoke. Each jumper leaves the sky. Are created by two M18 red smoke canisters. Oh boy. Now watch as our swooping team comes in at over 100 miles per hour. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. This is a hard task to do. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin will be coming in from the southwest. Good job, guys. Appreciate it. He's above the Prudential building.